starter. He was a member of the Miracle Mets. He was a twin. He even played for the Chicago White Sox for a couple years. Jerry Kuzman, how you doing, Jerry? I'm doing well. Nice to be with you. Jerry, that 69 Mets team is beloved in New York. What is the reason for that? Well, I think it goes back to the Dodgers and the Giants moving out of uh, New York to uh, California and not having a National League team there for quite a few years. And then when the Mets came along in 1962, they fell back in love with the lowly Mets, uh, mainly being their part of the National League, and they got to see all their uh, favorite players come back to town. Yeah, I mean, in Chicago, the Cubs are known as the lovable losers, but the, the Mets surpassed them in terms of having a bad record, and you know, there's only so much Casey Stengel as the manager that that can bring out the, the goodwill of the people. That At some point, winning was a necessity, and that 69 team certainly did that. Well, true. Um, the timing was uh, pretty good because the the U.S. was in kind of dire straits then with the Vietnam War, and there was riots in Philly and different places, and uh, there was some good news needed, so we came along at the right time to bring that good news and for people to get their minds off some of the detriments going on in the world. And and you just had the Cardinals uh, in 67 and 68 make it to the World Series, and then baseball went to the division setup that they have now. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, a lot more teams become in contention, and this team out of a little city known as New York hits the big time and and you were part of a, a pretty impressive rotation a couple guys uh tom siever nolan ryan yourself uh pretty good ball club well true we did have a, a wonderful pitching staff and um well we had over a thousand strikeouts that year and i believe we had something like 27 shutouts and a team era of two 43 or 247 so yeah we uh, uh we won 100 ball games so uh we were built around pitching a defense we didn't get a lot of runs we had to win our games you know one to nothing two to one and three to two so to speak but uh it, it was fun and we were basically a young ball club we had a few uh older veterans mixed in not many like Don Cardwell, Cal Coons, Ron Taylor, J.C. Martin, uh, Don Clendenin. But then uh, it went right on down to probably uh, 25-year-olds. I mean, Nolan Ryan was not a key member of that staff. I mean, he was a young guy, but he had those control problems. But you and Seaver carried the rotation. Well, true. Nolan was uh, working in as a spot starter, and he did have some control problems, but there was certainly a couple of times that Gil brought him on in uh, some tough situations, um, and he did the job. Now, what was Gil Hodges like as a manager? I tell you, Gil will be on my mind the rest of my life. He is the best manager I ever had. He was always three steps ahead of the posing manager. He ran the ball club with one set of rules. There was no stars in his ball club. Uh, he expected everyone to take care of their own job and worry about their own job, not worry about somebody else's, and uh, be ready uh, to do your job, and so and uh, never be late. So that was Gill, and uh, and Gill um, he kept the distance too from the players. He wasn't like a lot of managers are today roaming around the clubhouse and talking to everybody. Gil stayed in his office, and the only time he came in our clubhouse was if there was a meeting. Willie Mays ended his career at the Mets. How hard was it seeing what he became at the end of his career, how much his skills deteriorated, and watching him play through that? Well, there was nothing wrong with him at the end of his career. Uh, he, uh, As far as I was concerned, when Willie retired, he was still the best player in our ball club, and I begged him not to retire. Uh, but uh, Willie says, Coos, I'm tired. So <laughs> he hung it up. But he was great. It was great to have him uh, on your team. But he, at his peak, he he was about as good as you, you'll get. We talked to a lot of former ball players, and we asked them, you know, who's the best player you've ever played with or, or saw? And it seems one after another says, Willie Mays. Is, is he that high in your estimation as well? Absolutely. Um uh, I, you know, I 
pitched against him when he was with the Giants, and uh, that was a treat. Uh, and then to have him come over uh, to be with the Mets and turn around and see him in center field, it just gave you chills. But Willie won some uh, some key games for us and helped us along the way, and certainly it taught a lot of us uh, little things about uh, winning. With the White Sox, Tony La Russa was your manager. Did you ever envision him becoming the success that he became in the major leagues? Tony is a very talented person. He's got a, a knack of um, working with the players. He's kind of the opposite of Gil Hodges. Tony spends more time with the players talking baseball. And um, uh, I know when Tony first started out, and it's the same with most all new managers is understanding pitching. You know, when is he losing it? When does he still have it? And when is that key time to pull him out? And uh, that's something that uh, Tony uh, uh, understood more and more as he um, uh, managed. And uh, Tony is certainly uh, one excellent manager. To- I, uh, I thought the world of him when I played for him. But we had a lot of conversations. I mean, it was not completely unusual to talk uh, baseball in the clubhouse till 3 in the morning. Tony also has the benefit of having Dave Duncan as his pitching coach, who's, you know, some would say if there's ever going to be a coach elected to the Hall of Fame, it would be Dave Duncan. Well, I was uh, in the position to have had two catchers that were my pitching coaches. Certainly one was Dave Duncan and the other one was Rube Walker with the Mets. And how could catchers be such good pitching coaches? I mean, what, what gives them the... What gives them the know-how because they never pitched a day in their lives? I don't get it, but they seem to do it. Well, I wouldn't necessarily put all catchers uh, being good pitching coaches. Um, the catcher has a strong point in the fact that he's worked with a lot of pitchers. Uh, he certainly knows what ball movement should look like, what a curveball should look like, what a slider should look like, and if they're good or bad. Um I, I can't say that a catcher has the ability to explain uh, proper mechanics or feeling to a pitcher, but certainly uh, some catchers uh, are further ahead in doing that as a coach than others. Rube Walker knew that he wasn't, uh, one of his talents wasn't in teaching mechanics, but uh, he had uh, strong talents in um, uh, making you feel like you could beat anybody. And if you worked hard at it and you concentrated hard how to approach the hitter, how to change speeds, and set, or how to work that hitter, he had uh, very sh- strong abilities in that area. And being we were strong with the Mets in pitching, um, like Seaver and I, we were our own pitching coaches when it came to mechanics. If he was having problems on the mound, he'd look in the dugout, and I could point to one area on my body, and he would relate to that. And I'd do the same thing when I was on the mound. Um, We had that ability uh, between us, even though Rube Walker wasn't able to teach it. Um, We were all pretty much uh, good students of the game. Would Rube say, you know, back in my day, you know, and bring up this pitcher or that pitcher and how they did things, or was he good at uh, being in the moment, dealing with the pitcher that he had to deal with? Rube was in the moment. Uh, he would talk about back in his day if you asked him or wanted to know something more about a certain pitcher. But no, Rube was in the moment, and, and Rube, was, um, Rube was very happy with the staff he had. He, he felt it was the best staff he'd ever been associated with uh, as a player or a coach. Did you like when you and Tom Seaver got the nickname as the Tom and Jerry Show? It was fun. It certainly was fun, and it was fun being a one-two punch with the Mets for uh, a few years. Um, Certainly Tom was the leader of our staff and pretty much the leader of our ball club. And uh, it was always uh, fun, the competition we had between each other. If if, um, I struck out, you know, X amount of guys, he would try to better it the next day, or vice versa. Or uh, we would have little bets of who could saw a guy off the most times and one at bat. Or uh, who could period saw off Henry Aaron, which neither one of us ever did. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we had our little games out there also. Now, what was the best part of 
being a member of that 69 Mets team in, in the media capital of the world? I would say the best part was having Gil Hodges the manager because without him, I don't know if we could have done it. Uh, certainly we had a lot of talent, but he certainly molded us like Sparky Anderson said he just ran the big red machine. Well, Gil Hodges molded us into that uh, winning machine and uh, taught us a lot on how to be uh, adults, gentlemen, and the like. Uh, doing this in New York, Gil Hodges certainly carried the respect of the writers, too. And uh, we weren't mistreated, I don't think. Sure, there's probably an article here and there that uh, came down on us, but um, it was soon corrected, and um, I think we got along well with the media. What was your favorite moment of your career? Um, I would say winning the 69 World Series. I, you know, when in Chicago, we still wish you guys would have won 83. I mean, I know you won ugly with that winning ugly slogan, but again, that killed a lot of White Sox fans' hearts in 83 because they thought they had that uh, season wrapped up. You mean 83 or 73? 83 with the White Sox. Oh, oh, sure, with the White Sox, yeah. absolutely. That was, uh, gosh, that was sad. I mean, we won 99 games that year. We had a great ball club that played hard between the white lines. And uh, for us to go into the playoffs and not score runs like we're used to was uh, sad. Our, our hitters were just trying so hard, uh, I think, is probably one of the reasons. But, um, yeah, uh, we should have won that for Chicago that year, no, no doubt about it. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Kuzma. It was a pleasure talking to you. You're welcome. The feeling's mutual. Thank you.